The Naxport button template is a crucial part of the analysis process. It allows you to register the moments of performance you want to see, collect data on and analyse. Templates are created using two types of buttons, categories and descriptors. Categories allow you to create video clips of the moments that are important to you and descriptor buttons are used to add layers of information to your categories to provide as much or as little detail as you require. So, how do you create a template? Well, click on Options in the main menu. From File, select New Button Template. You can also open previously created or downloaded templates from this menu. The New Button Template option may also be available from the main menu, depending on your configuration, as explained in the video dedicated to the main menu. This is the template creation environment. To the left, you can see the Button Properties window, where you can fully customise the behaviour, look and feel of each button. To the right is the Button Template itself. You can easily adjust the size of the template window by clicking the bottom right corner of the template and resizing the window. We recommend setting the size of your template early in the creation process to maximise screen space during the registering process. On the side menu of the button properties window, you can access the various editing tools you'll see throughout this video. To add a button to the template, click on New Button. This will place a button and open the Appearance tab in the Buttons property window. Buttons can also be created by double-clicking on the template background or by clicking Enter after inputting a name on the Button Properties window. There are many options for editing the appearance of your buttons. Changes can be made to each individual button or in groups. To select a group, hold control on the keyboard and click each button, or drag the mouse over the buttons you want to change. Let's look at some of the options here. The button name can be changed in the Buttons property window, or by double-clicking on the button itself. Keep in mind that names are not case sensitive. If there are two buttons with the same name, regardless of case, they will act as a single button. A nickname can be assigned to buttons so that they appear in the template under a different name. This is useful for saving space. For example, use a number instead of a player's full name. Keyboard shortcuts allow you to assign a hotkey to any button in your template. This means that you can use the template without clicking on it with the mouse. There are 173 possible keyboard shortcuts available. See them all by clicking here. Ticking this box will display the hotkey on the button. Change the colour of your buttons using the colour palette or by inserting the colour code. The last selected colours are saved at the bottom of the screen. The colours selected for your category buttons also act as a quick filter when working inside the timeline environment. The colour, font, style, size and position of button text can be edited here. You can also hide the text by unchecking this box. The shape, size and position of buttons can all be edited. By default, the button shape is a rectangle, but there are a few other shapes you can choose from. The corners of the button can also be rounded. Select a button or buttons and change the size by pulling on the editing points. You can also hold the control key and spin the mouse wheel to change the size. In addition, it's possible to input the exact dimensions in the button properties window. To change the position of the button, simply click, hold and drag it to the desired position. You can input the XY coordinates on the button properties windows to change the position. You can also move buttons using the arrow keys or mouse. The vertical order box controls the layering of overlapping buttons. The highest number will sit on top, the lowest beneath. 
Vertical order can also be set by right clicking and selecting bring layer forward or send layer back. Adjusting the opacity makes it easier to see the overlapping buttons. Buttons can also be assigned as inactive. These can be used for organizing your template. For example, using them as headings for groups of buttons. An image can be added to the button. Click on the button, select the image such as a player or jersey and adjust it with this button or this tab. Images can be changed or removed at any time. Add a counter to a button, which indicates how many times the button has been clicked. The counter's location and colour can be changed. You can choose to only display it when hovering on the button, or hide it completely. Below this are options related to graphic descriptors. A special button that represents the field of play and allows you to add positional data to your analysis. We'll explain this in more depth in another tutorial. Here at the bottom you can add a description of the button, which appears when hovering over the button if this box is checked. This is useful for when you are sharing templates with colleagues for telling them how the button should be used. Ok, let's look at some other template options. Select the button and remove it from the template by using delete or this icon. Clicking on this icon locks the button to the template and disables editing. Buttons can also be cloned. This is useful when you want several buttons that have the same size and shape. Right clicking on a button reveals more options. Equalize all will make all the buttons the same size and shape as the button that is highlighted in blue. Equalize selection will make all selected buttons the same. You can select which elements of the buttons to equalize in the submenu that pops up. In this example, we want to equalize everything apart from the name and description, since these will be customized per player. This option is also available on the Home menu in the Buttons Properties window. Another useful tool in this menu is the Search and Replace tool. This is extremely useful for editing buttons that change every game, such as the names of the opposition team. You can search and replace by text or colour. For text, simply write the words you want to replace in the search box. Type the replacement in this box. Below this, you can select whether the tool is case sensitive or not. You can also select the type of buttons to be included in the search. Click on the tick to apply these changes. The colour option allows you to change buttons based on their colour. This can be applied to both background and font colours. Every time you double click to create a button, it will be a category by default. However, if you hold CTRL and double click, a descriptor will be created. You can tell this by the red dot on the button. There are two types of category buttons. The first, which is created by default, is the automatic category. This creates a clip with a set time, which by default is 5 seconds before and after the button has been clicked. However, the times can be customised as needed. These buttons could be used, for example, for single actions such as shots, where you might want to see more than 5 seconds before the action and less time afterwards. The second type are manual mode buttons. These are recognisable as they have a darker border. The default pre-click and post-click times are zero, but again, these can be edited. Manual mode buttons are clicked once to activate the button and a second time to deactivate. Manual mode buttons are perfect for events that vary in length, such as an attacking play or a period of possession. If you have more than one manual button on your template, you can set exclusions with this menu at the bottom. 
For example, a football team cannot be in attack and defence at the same time. So when you have this exclusion, when attack is active, pressing defence will automatically close the attack category. This saves time and increases accuracy when registering actions. A time label can be added to manual buttons. This means that instead of a click counter, the total time that this button has been active will be displayed. OK, let's turn to descriptor buttons by clicking here. Descriptors are used to describe the category. For example, a shot can be good or bad. We can change a category into a descriptor by clicking here. If you want a descriptor to appear in all your categories, you can check the Descriptor automatically added with each click box. This is useful for descriptors such as first half. Every time you click a category, this descriptor is added, meaning you don't have to click the same button over and over again. Automatic descriptors will appear on the template as a red dot with a black border. Once the first half ends, we uncheck this box and check it on second half instead. We also have the set point action option. This allows buttons to act as a scoreboard. Check this box, select the value, one if it's a goal, three for a three pointer in basketball, and the team to which it's assigned. Every time you click this button, these points will be added. The group tool allows you to create buttons with similar characteristics, such as attackers or defenders. The same button can be in more than one group. Player 2, for example, can be in both defenders and wingers. You can access groups in two different ways. The first is groups for the entire template. This is where you can create and see groups contained in the template and which buttons are part of each group. Click the plus symbol when you want to create a new group. Choose the name and select the buttons which will form that group. Click OK. You can do this the other way around by first selecting the buttons and then clicking the plus. Click the minus icon to remove a button from a group and delete the entire group with the trash can icon. Secondly, you can do this from individual buttons. Inside the button property window, select the button or buttons you want to include in a group. Click the plus icon and select the group. The difference between this and the previous method is that you can see all the available groups. It's just a different way of adding buttons. Once your template is ready, you can save it in the Options menu in the upper right. Here, you can also open or import existing templates in differing formats. In this tab, you'll find options related to the template window. You can add a background image, change the color of the template, or lock the window so it's always visible. You can make the background transparent, which is ideal if you work on a single screen and want to superimpose the template on top of the video player. Here, you'll find a tab that allows you to password protect your template if you work on a shared computer. In the other tab, you can add a description, which is displayed on the Info button, where you can also see the total number of buttons separated by categories, descriptors, and inactive buttons. It also gives the exact measurements of the template. Activating this button will keep the aspect ratio when resizing. This option is very useful when, for example, you're adapting your template to a smaller screen or for use in Naxport Tag and View. Another useful editing tool found in the side menu is the grid. This is only visible when editing your template and serves as a reference when placing buttons. 
You can also align buttons vertically by right clicking and selecting Align Selected Buttons to Reference Button. Remember, the reference button always has a blue border. Finally, this icon accesses a template overview tool. This shows all the buttons in the template in alphabetical order and is especially useful for templates with many buttons. Not only does it show the relevant data for each button, but it also allows you to access the button properties by double clicking. And that's it. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And to keep up to date with all the latest Naxport news, why not subscribe to the channel? Thanks, and see you next time.